Welcome. Welcome to our. Oh, that's for. That's a good portent. Welcome to our first uh, inaugural event this semester. Um, it is going to be about poetry, and uh, it is my. Hello. Hello. Uh, it is my great pleasure um, to welcome you all. Uh, there is a sign-in sheet uh, which you could put your names on. We do it for statistical purposes. Um, in addition to that, I did pass around a stack of pamphlets uh, with our program for the spring semester with dates, topics, and everything. Um, I don't think we have. Are there any left? There are a few. That's fine. Um, if you need more, go and talk, come and talk to me. Uh, you should also have some in your department since we did our best uh, distributing uh, them across. Okay. Um, so, haven't we met before? <laughs> I knew that was going to be... <laughs> was gonna work. Okay, um, so, as I said, this is the first... Maybe this one will be better. Uh, this is the first workshop uh, this semester. Uh, some of you have attended our previous workshops. There were two um, in the spring of last year. Um, by popular demand, we are continuing, and by we, I mean mostly uh, Joao here. Um, I don't think, I, since you're already here, I don't think I need to be convincing you why poetry is a uh, good medium, good vessel for language teaching, for language acquisition. Um, but if you do indeed need further convincing, I hope that by the end of this workshop, you will be fully, uh, you will be fully on board and you will become enthusiasts of poetry as such, and also supporters of uh, this guy right here, which is our multilingual poetry festival, which we kicked off last year. Um, it was Zhao's idea, I helped with the execution. Overall, it was, I think, pretty successful. You did not help, you did it all. Uh, <laughs> I did my part. But yeah, we, we, we got a lot of people um, in attendance. <laughs> Uh, no, but seriously, we did <laughs> we did get a pretty pretty good crowd. Uh, there were about 40, 50 people in the room, as you can tell. There, some people needed to even uh, stand outside. So uh, it was widely widely successful. Um, some of the things that we did, and I don't know, Joel, you could uh, maybe move the mouse there. Uh, so we had naturally poetry readings. We also had uh, song performance. Uh, this is actually uh, Serbian 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 Croatian, yeah. Um, and then you guys get the idea. Um, and then we also had. Can you hit spacebar? Yeah. Or a nope. Huh. There we go, that's what I needed. Okay. And we also had a short video uh, that was prepared by students of uh, Polish and or Russian. It was a transnational collaboration uh, between our uh, university and a university in Moscow. All that being said, uh, we are gearing up for uh, another, in uh, another instance of, of, our, of our festival. Uh, we'd really like for this to uh, be even more exciting, even bigger. Uh, some of the things, uh, well, so this is the tentative date uh, that we have decided on, pretty close to when we hosted it last year. Uh, what we don't have yet is a suitable venue. We're thinking about Deutsches House for this. We've talked to Bill Dillinger. He said, if I will, he said he'd look into it. Uh, but that being said, there is a question mark next to it. If you have an idea or ideas where this could be hosted um, and if you would like to lend us your idea we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, likewise, we don't know if uh, drinks or snacks is something that people would be interested in. The event is hosted between 3 and 6 p.m. If we should get drinks or snacks, uh, if this is something that literally should be on the table, uh, do let us know. Um, we pretty much got the website down. This is the link right there. Um, the link is a, will essentially take you to the digital version of this booklet, which I will pass around right now. Um, there is a recording on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Uh, we would like to make more pamphlets, maybe another booklet, and poems. Now, uh, none of this is going to happen without your help. 
and by your help I mean that would be your facilitation with, uh, with the poets. Um, originally we were thinking uh, to have to, to do it in a, in a similar format whereby we give each department, each language program full discretion over how poems should be selected and then we only would ask you to submit them to either me or Joao by uh, March 29th. Um, last year we, and by we I mean the LRC and uh, the Spanish uh, leg department picked up um, a lot of the costs uh, for this. If you, and again, this is an event for all of us, if you could, um, and if you would be able to contribute financially or otherwise to this event, I would really appreciate it, Joe would really appreciate it, and I suspect our students uh, would greatly appreciate it as well. Um, I will leave it like that, at that I don't like asking people for money. Um, <laughs> you can get it. I know. So, but I'd like to speak to you longer, but it's getting a little late. So I'm gonna pass it on to Jao now. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, I'm passing it on to you. Uh -huh. Thank you all. And um, so uh, Simon has presented the uh, who has you and what we're doing here. So what I want to present to you uh, today is a little bit some ideas and some uh, ways that we can work or think of poetry in the classroom and how to uh, work with the poetry. And uh, before, uh, I mean, not before, but right at start, I uh, prepared a little, uh, a uh, Lab so we can start so if you guys have computer phones that you can answer the question so the uh, the first question is just using one word one word you can describe poetry and you can answer multiple times if you want just once or twice so you can um, yes this to just a list of words, a word cloud, like it is here, so the words go, there's more, one more gets bigger, and so my, uh, my suggestion here is just an introduction to what poetry is, one, like students get in line with like what poetry is, that there's no right answer, we're just talking about poetry, and once we finish this activity, we already have one first poem, and this is it. It's visual poetry, it is language and image, and it works online, it changes because it's in motion. So we already have one first task 
done the students. And this is it. We have one poem, poem for the class. Or you can use those words here, ask the students to develop different tags. You can keep going, pull lab, different questions. You, you can work with this with different questions. So we're working on the, uh, what poetry is. So my, my, what I want to show here is that I'm not looking for the right answer, and I'm not looking for one way to work with poetry. And I'm not looking for the uh, right or the best method to do, to do that in class, but just with ideas. So if this were my class, and if I were here uh, working with my students, this is what I would do. We just got the first poem, and it's it. I would take a picture, screenshot, and keep it for my class with the words. That's it. Because I, 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 I want to work with visual poetry. I want to work with the possibilities beyond uh, uh, words that we can get with the students. Okay. So, Pulev uh, is something you can subscribe to? Pulev, Columbia has subscription. You can yeah. just get as a, with your Columbia I, uh, Uni. Yeah. And uh, once you get the uh, login, you can use for all your classes and you can keep all your uh, Pulevs for your class. And then you set it up to use the word cloud? Yes. Were you? I could change the settings for a list of words. I could change the settings for multiple choice answers if I wanted to have the right answer for what poetry is, uh -huh. give three options for the students. Mm -hmm. But I, you could do any any way you want, right? And if, if we're working with language, then it depends you can work with the spelling. If it's, It depends on the way you approach your language uh, teaching. Okay, so let's go back here. Uh, What is uh, poetry? Uh, uh, again, I'm not trying to answer. I just picked, not randomly, but I just picked two of my favorite poems in, that, I, that are long time references for me. And a third one that is just one that I just I picked randomly. And I could work with you as a classroom and ask you guys. So I have here three poems, three different authors, three different poets. Which one you guys think? is the one that I just picked randomly and which ones are the ones that you think that I actually selected for you guys for so for us to read together. So you guys can answer the question if you want to take a, a chance. I just picked here three. One by Emily Dixon, one by Lester Hughes, and one by Shakespeare. And then got three in English. Here I could have picked Portuguese, but then it's just for us. So again what I'm doing here is just showing you guys one other way that we can approach poetry in class. How do I see poetry as a, I'm not talking as a instructor, but as a language teacher, I'm talking about as a person, this is how I approach poetry. So I pick three ones here for you to see. I don't know, any volunteer that would like to take a guess here, which ones respond better to my sensibilities right now? The third. This one? It's the one you just picked. Randomly? Yeah. No. Oh, it's a Shakespeare. No, the one is the middle. It's a Shakespeare. Yes, Diana is my neighbor, so she's... <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but why I, I'm picking here? Just to create a discussion, a conversation, this is like, you know, uh, I cannot dance upon my toes. To me, personally, it's just one of my favorite sentences in the English language ever, because the craziness of the sentence that I cannot dance upon my toes, she's talking about dancing and ballerinas, and it's just beautiful to me. Less than Hughes is just because, again, it's the second sense that I love. What happens to a dream deferred? And so those are just ideas that we have in class that I'm talking like, this is what I have. Uh, oops. It was here. Last year we, we did a, uh, uh, two workshops with, the, uh, with everybody to talk about how to approach uh, poetry. So what do we have here? It's just some of the activities that we've done in the past. What I uh, decided to do today is just try to do something different because we have those activities. They're recorded. The, you can find the uh, presentations on YouTube, the uh, LRC YouTube channel, and you can you have the explanation of the uh, activities. You have the PowerPoints available, and you can always talk to me if you have questions or any other suggestions that you want to add to our poetry presentations. 
we're going to have an idea for those of you who were not here in the past. What have we done? So the first two workshops, we try to approach poetry in more, let's say, classic ways of writing poetry. Today I want to go for something different, but the writing is here. So some activities we have, we have like basic language activities, like when you pick words in your class, and you can work for elementary classes and two advanced classes, and work in groups, work separately in groups, uh, creating poems like one word, two words, three words, four words, rotating class. Uh, one of a uh, one that I like a lot is instructions as poetry, and this one here I'm taking a cue from a uh, uh, Yoko Ono and Bruce Nomu, two of my favorite artists. They work with instructions and they write uh, short instructions, and I use that a lot because it works when you're in Romance languages with commands and imperatives. That works perfectly for 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 our classes. Uh, poetry in response to art. It's something that we, uh, uh, I've done in the past, and it's also like using art. And the students write this one here that I that we have the past presentations is a poem in response to a uh, Rembrandt uh, painting. Sound, <coughs> use of sound. So sound <coughs> as poetry in the sense it's a collection of sounds that we can work with the students and then we can make short videos with the sounds and then we can respond poetically to the sounds in writing or not in writing. Uh, so sounds here. So those are suggestions and ideas that we have presented in the past. So what I'm going to do today is give you some other activities, but we can we keep in mind that all those activities are there available for us and we can use any time we want. Oops, I'm going back. So if you go to the LRC, oh, this is one of the sound poems, sorry, it's clean. So if you go to the LRC uh, YouTube page, you go by semester, and you, if you, uh, was it in spring? I'll, I'll write down. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, presentations are there. And for uh, today, I have here a selection of types of poetry that we, we can use from like free verse, lyrical, narrative, epic, uh, sonnet, limerick, and concrete poetry. I'm going to show you guys today what is that I mean by concrete poetry. And we have like all types of poetry that we can use in, in class. So what I'm thinking today that we can work with poetry. I'm thinking of technology and I'm thinking before technology I'm actually thinking of social media. How does how does social media work with poetry? How do we, where do we find poetry that it's not only in the books, that it's not only in the library that we can see. And I think one of the uh, use of so social media is actually using for poetry. Okay. With the classic hashtag poetry or hashtag poetry in your language. And here are a few examples of hashtag poetry on Twitter. So hashtag poetry. So a lot of uh, images of uh, like people responding poetically with images uh, or uh, this is like NPR uh, using uh, asking teachers what is love to work with students in the classroom. It's a beautiful project uh, by NPR. And you can bring that into class because uh, I, I like in Portuguese, if you use the hashtag uh, poesia, uh, there are poets that only work with Twitter or Instagram. And how do I find those poets? Just using the hashtag and then you can get into they're bringing to class, read, how do we work with this, and we can read in class, we can have, uh, part of my classes, I ask the students to monitor social media throughout the semester, and they keep bringing to class things that they are interested, and uh, now, because of the uh, project, we are going to be using uh, the hashtag for poetry, so try to see who's writing poetry, and uh, what kind of poetry we see here. Uh, this one here is uh, Pinterest. Pinterest also you can use in class using the idea of poetry and how do we bring poetry in, in, in a classroom. I did different examples of uh, so we can read, we can work in class. So this is just like bring social media and poetry in the uh, classroom. Uh, visual arts. 
Visual arts bring a lot of interesting aspects for our classes in terms of language and uh, uh, poetry. <coughs> Uh, this one here, I select this one because this one is on show right now at MoMA. So it's a uh, Bruce Newman with the uh, it's a reflection of his life. And this piece here is uh, at MoMA. It's 100 Live and Die. And it's uh, a <coughs> statistic to go lighting up throughout the uh, performance. And uh, I picked this one because I, I love this one. It's in Berlin, but it's a uh, Joseph Deuce. Uh, I applaud it for the pronunciation. It's a blackboards. It's blackboards that he used for performance in the 1960s. That he wrote a hundred blackboards for a protest, a sitting that he did, and they're on show and display at the museum as if the exhibition. So the idea here is that we can use the blackboards as something uh, temporary but also permanent. So how do we use this in the classroom of working with the poetry? Uh, and that could be an inspiration, that could be a visit to the museum, that could be finding words, finding a narrative art, finding pieces of art that are creating dialogues with language that we can bring to class. This is very basic. It's like live uh, and die, uh, love and live in very contrasting words. Of course, this one here is a little bit more complex, but they also bring ideas of language and how do we use language uh, for uh, poetry and concrete poetry. So here it's one of my suggestions of activity. So this is a, a, a concrete poem by a Brazilian artist called Haroldo de Campos. And uh, those two are responses to his, uh, his piece here. So uh, it says here, uh, Código, which is code in English. So you have like this, and you have the basic response here by Eric Carter, cold, very similar. And then you have this one here, cold, cold. So responding to visual poetry, responding to concrete poetry. This is a concrete poem that I, I pick, but we can work with this, and it could be a traditional poem too. It could just be, and how do we respond to those images? Or how do we respond to the, uh, Poet. What is the uh, connections that we have here? And here I brought this one specifically because we work with different languages. Here, the connection from Portuguese into English and how we make the uh, transition in languages. Here, and how they understand what they are shown. So this would be one uh, activity too. Uh, this is Agent Piper and. What I love about her piece here is because she uh, wrote note cards and distributed the note cards around the city. Some of the note cards now are on display at MoMA. Uh, they were last year, but now it's in their permanent collection. Note cards as poetry. How do we get uh, other people's attention? So this is a performance piece and poetry. So that we can work in classes, we can work note cards to other classes, we can work with the uh, English uh, for language, the uh, American language, uh, sorry. American language. American language. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. So, developing connections in different languages, so how the foreign students write note cards in English or in their own language, bring to the other students in our classes in their language. So, how do we create the connection in this? Another uh, version of this one is also postcards. Postcards, writing postcards here. So those, it's because I, I want my students to try to understand uh, poetry, not as the uh, traditional reading sonnet, with its specific number of syllables, specific number of words, specific number of lines, but finding poetry in different aspects of our daily life. So how do we find poetry in a postcard that you receive from a friend who was abroad in the middle of your vacation? It is a, it is a poetic gesture of writing a postcard or writing a note card. Hers are very political. She's talking about racism in, in, in America. So. 
which is also a possible topic, but it's just the idea of different elements that we can bring into our classes. Oops. Uh, one more idea is the, is the use of video. It, this is a, uh, it's a video, it's just a short video performance that <laughs> a friend used with uh, some of my uh, poetry. This is all in Portuguese. So uh, she's a dancer. And I just want to show you because she made this using PowerPoint. That's all she did. There's no technology. There's nothing advanced here. She just created this response to poetry using uh, uh, PowerPoint and with uh, oops with words. And she played uh, two seconds. So she did this. It, she was just. It's her voice recorded. I so that's how she did it. It, it. This is a. It's a screen recording of a PowerPoint presentation. There's no. There's no uh, eye movie. Uh, it, it's a screen recording, and I want to show you this because of how simple it is. That we we don't have to go for high and uh, eye movie because we can work it out in, in our classes with uh, d d creativity in different ways to do it. And uh, then uh, we're going to uh, use of theater games. It's, it's something that I've been doing a lot and, and I think it works. So I have some activities we're going to do in a couple of minutes so we understand. But I'm using here two artists, Viola Spalding and uh, Jean-Claude Von Italy. Uh, uh, Viola Spalding has uh, theater games. For, uh, she developed theater games in the 1960s. And they've been used a lot of theater games for the classroom, for the language classroom. So you can buy her book, Theater Games, and you can buy a, a box of note cards of theater games, and you can just select note cards and use for different activities. We're going to do one activity here. And Jean-Claude Bonitali, uh, I use because he has the idea of collective writing, in which writing is not a sole task. Writing is a collective effort which I think it's really important for our language classes. This is, it could be a collective practice. It, it doesn't have to be a solo, it could be group. Uh, and Lucy Pop, the Writer's Journal for, for our classes, I've been using for my classes, which is just students uh, keep a, uh, a journal, writing in language. It could be words, it could be sentence, it could be, so we create a, a base of ideas for the students to use later. So if they write every day, half page, or it depends on, or three times a week, one page, we created a database for students to use in the classroom for our writer for our writing in, in, in the future. Uh, okay, let's do some. So what I'm I'm just gonna do some quick activities here, so first to try to see what I'm meaning. And uh, what I would try to do here is just show how we can work in different ways with poetry in the classroom. So, and uh, of course, we we want everybody's participation in poetry, but it, this is not only for the uh, poetry, but it's also for our classroom. How do we bring ideas for the classroom? So, uh, let's work now in different groups. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, different post-its. Uh, different colors. Should have put it there. But uh, so for the uh, for the light blue, light, light blue, light, light blue, you're gonna answer again the question. You can repeat the answer. What is poetry? Okay. Should write it I'm gonna write that on the board. Then for the pink one, you're just gonna say I am, and you can say something. For the uh, 
Uh, okay, let's put in the board. So for now, just get one of each, spread it out, and then I'm going to put in the board, and then we work on this. And this is yes, it's my teaching. It's messy. So sorry. I, sh I, I prepare and then I don't. Just so one, one one of each color. You should have four oh, colors of post-its okay. with oh. you. Okay. Oh. Writing it. Okay, so poetry is blue, pink is I am. Uh, no, yellow is I am. Yes. 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 Oh, he wrote it there. Sorry. Light blue, light blue. Light blue. But Joe, is this like collaborative okay. writing or just No, for now it's just you. For now it's just you. Can we see this? The box? Can we see the contents of the box though? Yes. Someone has to do it. Four. Four. So you need four. Need four. four. Okay. So do you have yellow? Blue, blue, blue. Or is it green? Yellow. We don't have green. Which green did you No, it's light blue or... Sorry. Oh. Well, you don't have light blue. No. I should get, okay. I should get more markers. Wait. Uh, no, it's a green. Simon. Simon. You're in the classroom next door. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Oh, no. Wait. Don't change it. It's okay. Uh, Why do we write on the paint? He ran away with a marker. Okay, so it's uh, it's light blue or green. Depends on what it was green to me, but some yeah. people told me it was not green. So sorry. It's, I saw green, but it's light blue. <laughs> so, so pink is poetry, is? Yes. Okay. Pink is poetry. Yes. For uh, for our activity purposes, if you if you if you do it differently, it's fine. It's fine. Just I know. No, it's not. This is green to me, but for some people it's not. It's gray. It's light sage. Are you happy right now? <laughs> <laughs> light sage or aqua? Uh -huh. No, no, no. Light sage, you were right. It's not aqua. So, so light sage. What do you do with the Hashtag IKEA. Exactly. An adjective. Like, ah, uh, you. That was just, uh, 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 yeah. Over what? That's my, uh, You can write in Paris. This is very, yeah, it's very, 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 Someone should have a pencil. Are you collecting? No. Oh, you're not? Are we picking up the list? Can you keep it in there? This is the fun.
Okay. So now, uh, I'm uh, I'm thinking of poetry, but I'm also thinking of a language classroom. So what I'm uh, in groups of four. I want you guys to first share your answers by colors and see, see that, uh, like what's different, something, I don't know, new vocabulary that you don't know that people are using or so how do, you, how do we respond to those questions? So try to get together and see the answers that you have so far, thinking of those four elements. And of course, if this were like, if I were in my class, I could just do something different. Like, I don't know, a color, a place, a, an adjective, a noun. It could be more grammar oriented, like a verb, a noun, a, a preposition. Or you could be more vocabulary, like uh, folks on vocabulary, or vocabulary. Or you could do something more abstract, like poetry, poem. So, what I, I, I try here to mix a little bit using I am as a introduction, like first class, getting to know each other, who we are, but also try to add here, because we're talking about poetry. And so those are just suggestions. I, I added four because I had four different post-its on my desk today. <laughs> it could be five, it could be three, it could be two, right? And uh, I'm going to talk to you about the different colors and why the different colors. So, but right now, just let's make this as a classroom. Let's say in groups of four, ex exchange your answers right now. Just. Two or four, two or five. Yeah. I am. Yes, overwhelmed. Oh, is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? I'm for me a friend. Oh, he's a friend. A moment. Oh, I got this. I do not need to do Okay, so. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> yeah. I am I am I am the son of all my children. Oh my god. <laughs> Happy, happy, exciting. Uh, the oh, yeah. oh, is a poem. <laughs> the same, no? The same. I am hungry. I am hungry. I am hungry. Oh, good. Okay. What is the poem? The last one. Our words. Our words. Our words. With a music. With a Okay. Our words. Our words. With a message. I'm feeling. Yeah. Very enjoyable. Yeah. I'm being very enjoyable. For me, as one is fuel for my life. Oh my god! <laughs> Wait. A song is the fuel for my life. Me, a language. I thought that it's a sandwich. It's good for me. This one. That's very Very focused. I said I am with you. 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 I said
Oh, I like to go to Ideas. Like, we need a one more minute. We need one more minute. We're gonna give. Uh, we're gonna uh, get to know each other. Words. So how this from this activity is just like a. Like warming up for for later. So what what you have here are different colors. So what I would do now is like I'm gonna give you suggestions of how to work with this. In, in, in this group, you guys could exchange uh, post-its and talk to somebody else and explain who that person is. If we're th I'm thinking of language here. Right? Yeah. So we go different groups and who that person is. But now what we have here is like the first activity, we have like a, a vocabulary bank. We have words that we can use. How are we going to use the words? It's up to us. So if I'm thinking here that I want to create something more creative to students, like visually interesting, I have this that I, I call it a poem or the the poem, like, and it's a decision of your of the group. So, using the same color, only one color. Oh. I want each group to decide which color works best for creating one piece together. Is it clear? So, you guys are going to decide what is the best color for like. You have four people here. What is the best color that's going to Best work for one piece of writing that it's gonna be it's gonna belong to, to the group. And you guys can add here different order the way you want. Yeah. Oh, I am. The best. The best. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I would go for the highest syntactic variety where you have the most grammatical parts, adjectives, nouns, verbs. Yeah. That's what I like to do. Okay. Yeah. That was the main thing. So or it could be so, haiku. Okay. It could be haiku. one. It could be, <laughs> you guys can just create sentences. You can create a visual perspective, like a circle or a pyramid of words. So you guys are going to How do you think that? That's a word of words. It's a great. It's a collective. Oh, that's a great. Okay. Okay. A cookie. No, a recipe for poetry. A recipe for poetry. Okay. No. 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 That's yes, even better. What were you thinking? I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking about food, but. Ah. <laughs> no, but she makes a yeah, recipe for, for poetry. So you mix? So you mix. Yeah. yeah. So uh, did we decide on the color? Yes, yellow. Yellow? Okay, yellow. It was only yellow. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I think yellow is the least controversial of all the colors in terms of. No, okay, yellow it is. So, recipe for poetry. All right. Okay, so, who's starting? I am. For poetry, it's a poet. I am a poet. So, blue. But that we're doing we're working with yellows. Uh, no, now they're blue because it, it is very special poetry. Oh, I see, okay. We need to a poet. No, we have poetry also. A poetry, okay. Alright, so I'll get pink. Alright, pink. Okay, all right, pink. pink this. Pink. Yeah, Although, it's probably not pink, okay, it's so more magenta. So, I put the size of the size. I think we're going to be using the size. Okay, well, I put the size because this is like very simple. Very simple. Yes. So two pounds of personal ideas. Two pounds of personal ideas. Good. 
You will do the post it's in the theater? Yeah, we are using it. No, but put them here. Oh, okay. Okay. okay, so what is the quantity of music that you're writing? You're being recorded, and this is going to be in the interview. I might help you. They are for freedom, for freedom, for we had some interesting uh, oh, yeah. questions from the groups, and I think uh, your group had one important question. Can you guys mm -hmm. ask your question again to, to everybody? <laughs> well, we wanted to know if we were cheating by mm -hmm. using one of each, mm -hmm. one of different colors, so we kept our food mm -hmm. mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. for sure. The answer to that question is it depends on your approach and how you see the activity. And I think, I mean, for, for somebody who already know me, you probably know that the answer, my answer would be it's fine, I don't care, because it's part of the uh, construction of language. I, I try not to get so much control over what students are writing, especially in group activities. Some people might want to. So for my, because the way that, that I was thinking this activity is, I, I, I asked for one color because I would switch groups and I would ask the other group to respond to the first reading using a different color. So if I were to keep the activity, I would ask to remove, but then, it's okay. so what do we have here are writings by our students, collective. Is it poetry? It depends on how you see the activity. Yes, or it's a writing activity, or it's a collective getting to know each other activity. But it's how you respond to the construction of uh, 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 fiction, or in our case, uh, poetry. So to me, yes, and we can work throughout the semester with different pieces of uh, that we collect throughout the semester, creating a one short publication in the end of the semester by that class, 
that we can exchange with different classes, with different courses, and how do, how do we progress in terms of the semester? If you're doing this words, just words with elementary classes, how do, what is it that they're writing in the end of the semester? And all this can be controlled in different ways by us just making sure that our activities also progress mm -hmm. as we go over go on in the semester. Bring new, uh, more challenging activities, more challenging language in creating a portfolio of writing by the students. Uh, we're, as usual, we're nearly out of time. So I'm just going to briefly talk about a couple of activities that I also have. The writing circle. It's, a, it's an activity of violence spelling that I like a lot, in which we have a circle of students in here, four, five. I usually bring a bag full of objects, random objects, and ask the students to just narrate orally a story using the objects. So one student picks one object and starts a story. The second continues to the second story. Then the other students who are not just listening, they are writing down that story. So we are creating here, going from oral narrative to written narrative. So how do we make this transition? And then for, for the writers, I'm not concerned with the perfectly writing of what they, they're, they're listening. It's their story. They're recreating a story that's been told in class. And then you can have like a short story later. You can have different, uh, or you can transform that activity into a collective, or you can have students rotate the writing. You have only one writer, and the writer goes, we rotate in class, so we have one piece for the class, we can have multiple pieces for the class, and then the students who told the story are going to read the story and make and, and comment on that story. This is, it could be for poetry, it could be just for any writing uh, activity. Uh, Augusto Boal is a Brazilian uh, theater specialist. He wrote a very classic 1970s called Theater of the Oppressed. And uh, it's an amazing book. It was traveling in Latin America. And one of the activities that I use from his book is with photos. So what I do in the first class of my intermediate classes, for the first class, I, I create the students a set of 12 questions that they want to ask each other. And they have to answer the questions using photos, but not online pictures. Their assignment is to go out for two days and take pictures answering those questions. Okay? So Boal created that activity when he was traveling in, in Latin America, and he was working with the uh, minor workers, and he was trying to uh, develop a sense of their own uh, background, where they came from. So there, he was creating narratives for oppressed workers. Of course, that's not what we're doing here, but we're creating narratives for the students' daily life. <laughs> for the students' daily life. So this is, I usually, it's, it could be eight, ten questions, it depends. So the questions that I have in my classes are very, they go from where do you usually eat dinner to and uh, to more questions more like uh, where do you come from in the sense of, so they have to try to find ways to answer those questions using images with their phones. This semester for the first time I try to do something different because I usually had the students create a PowerPoint with all the pictures and we work in class. This semester I added one and they just added the pictures in one big file in my class. And then when you've got a class, uh, we're using uh, the presentation here. We're just looking at pictures, and the students just pick one picture and work in groups trying to answer who that person is, what question that picture answered, and who that person was, using the images and talking to each other. It's, an, it's, a, it's a comprehensive tribute class, so it's, they speak a lot, so it worked for that class, because it's a class for Portuguese for Spanish speakers, so it's usually close to events, students. So, they but take the pictures from the interviews or no. from their own? No, no, they, they use their phones the or their cameras. Yeah. They, take, they take pictures. Oh, they take pictures. Like we did mm -hmm. in the past. Okay. That's how I take the photo. And uh, this is one of the uh, uh, 
some of the activities that we have and work with creativity in class and writing. And with this, we have unlimited resources uh, for using uh, poetry. It could be, and we, we can bring from our languages to class, what is it that we, we want? So this semester, I've been very interested in, in, in the case of visual poetry and how to work with this, uh, with technology and uh, moving uh, poetry. It could be online or in, in, in forms of a, a paper to in class that are uh, suggestions. So this is, these are some suggestions. First, I have uh, more that I could uh, show you, things that I've done in the past, things that I've been doing in class, and how do we bring that to class. And it's just, uh, there's some tips about crafting and strategies for revising. This is uh, more specific if you want to go for more detail. And uh, it's for the uh, No Nonsense Guide to Teaching Writing. So the Mason Group for Teaching uh, Writing. Uh, one more, just one more, it's poetry from personal experience. This is, uh, I, I, I started for elementary and advanced. Because for elementary level, you can just think of a moments in your life, hometown, list of words that describe the place, nouns, verbs, short sentences. For an advanced level, you can go over your mind, memories, you can create something more. So uh, poetry from a personal experience in the sense of students are writing about their uh, uh, lives. And just my final comment, it's a question that I have for you, it's actually, how do we grade, or do we grade, which, which is a question that I get a lot about poetry and how do we work this, how do we grade, because there's always the question of a, the university, we're in the punitive system, right, that we punish and we reward sometimes students, so this is how do we, how do we work with this, how do we bring creativity and poetry into a system that punishes and rewards students. And, of course, it, you have to think of your department, your language, and what are your objectives with this. And if you want, I think it's some, some people are more comfortable with, with, with grading. And I think the only thing that we must be careful is how grading can become a blockage for the students for production. Or not, because if you're using the, I mean, if you uh, if you um, balance you know, the the problem, the, the requests that you transmit through the tasks can be measurable in language skills. You know, I want a student, for example, to learn, or a group of students to learn the imperative in whatever language I teach. So then I may, uh, uh, I may include the, the visual poetry, say, so, okay, take pictures of, uh, of people, you know, someone interacting or yelling at each other or doing something, record something like this. You, lot, you hear a lot of that in the streets. So then you can teach, you create a little poem. You, within which you teach the, within, uh, and it, in this activity you teach the imperative or something, so you know that they, they learned that, they acquired that. I'm just saying, it, yeah, yeah. it just so, crossed my mind, you know, it may work or it may not work. I it, that's, that's what I, it, it's going to see how it works best for your classes, for your department, for the level of your students. But it's just ways to bring more language use into the classroom and the ways that students can respond. But yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, it's last year afternoon. when you had the, the, the you published the booklet, I engaged three of my, of my students whose little work was uh, was is, oh, yeah. is present there, and um, they were uh, elementary two <coughs> students, so they wanted to engage in this. I said okay, and they looked up words and they worked with each other. So for them it was a challenge. They learned a lot. They asked me, how do we say this? Is this construction correct? Why is it not? And so on. Yeah, sure. Like when we had the booklet, uh, when we were doing work with the booklet, a lot of uh, the language that participated, we had this question that, oh, there are some mistakes, some grammar mistakes in, in, in the original. It, it's fine. I mean, who am I to judge grammar? Gosh, no. 
And there was, if you read carefully, you might find, but are they really mistakes? I don't know. But it's there. It's a, it's a publication made by the students. And especially, here is, it was elementary students. In Portuguese, we had elementary, in Spanish, elementary students publishing that piece of poetry in, in But there. because I'm such a witch, they, make it, uh, they, uh, they wanted to, to, to correct their errors. So, okay, let's, uh, is it correct? So let's correct it together. So they, you know, they it's, want it's the, the work. primary error, errors before we submitted the thing, after we discussed the imagery and everything. So yeah, it's going to work we worked, your... Uh, we worked in the classroom. We learned from one another. And it, it's going to work see how it works in yeah. your in your own uh, sections. So I don't know if you guys have any, any questions or comments, and we have a couple of minutes. And yes? You said if you put all of the photos together, yeah, what's the environment? What, Crazy. Oh, the environment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, my, it's always crazy, my environment. But it's because, uh, yeah. Uh, so what I did, and, uh, I used collaboration in, in Canvas, which is a Word document. So I just created a, if you go to collaboration in, in Canvas, you, it creates a Word document. So it's for all the class, and I just ask the students to add the pictures randomly. But you could go by numbering the questions and creating the spaces for, for, for the answers. So yeah, that's how I did it with, on Canvas. Because it was the easiest way to find that everybody had access to one document. You no, know, and sometimes my students work on Google Docs when they do something independently and then they post it. On yeah, it could be Google yeah. Docs too. If you do Google Docs, it they could be too. Each other, we can see it's just that uh, Canvas does not offer PowerPoint for collaboration. So I used Word and it, it worked for the class. It just goes scrolling up and down the pictures. Scratch it up. <laughs> See? Poetic image. Yes. It's scrolling up and down. <laughs> Do you have any other questions? No. Any other? Simon? Um, so, questions? No, no, no. Well, thank you guys for coming. And it's just, if you guys have any questions, any, I don't know, any ideas that you want to share, suggestions, talk to me or Simon, we're available, and uh, hopefully we're going to have a bigger poesia this year, more, with more languages participating. And more levels. And more levels, and yes, learners. more like a five volume publication mm -hmm. by year. <laughs> <laughs> no? yeah. Thank you so much, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.